we are talking to Angela Davis. Um, it's the 27th of February, 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, we are really pleased, Linda and I, to have you here for this conversation. Um, so, should we begin? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know we've been talking about this for a for very a long time, and I okay. can't believe it's finally happening. Happening, I know. Well, we're in all three in the same place <laughs> Yeah, yeah. after a while. So, Angela, we'd like to start by you telling us um, a bit about, we're not asking you for your entire trajectory of feminist activism, but how you got into feminism and um, feminist activist work specifically. Well, it's kind of a complicated story because um, I, um, it took me a while to actually begin to positively but critically identify with feminism. Um, even though, as I look back now, mm -hmm. I had been doing feminist activism for a long time. Uh, uh, at that particular time, and I'm speaking specifically about the the, the late 1960s, uh, uh, when I was doing work on women's rights and uh, black women and a whole range of issues, uh, International Women's Day, mm -hmm. but I considered feminism to be um, uh, bourgeois. Mm -hmm. uh, white and bourgeois, so I did not identify mm -hmm. uh, with feminism. As a matter of fact, when I first, when I wrote Women, Race, and Class, mm -hmm. um, I was kind of shocked that everybody began to refer See to me as, as a, a feminist. feminist. Right. And I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm not a, a communist. I'm a communist. <laughs> I'm a black woman revolutionary. Right. Right. And that would be oxymoronic. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as, um, as women of color feminism began to uh, develop, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I um, began to quite comfortably um, identify with that feminism. I suppose I had to recognize that there are different feminisms, That's there are right. multiple mm -hmm. feminisms, uh, and there's some feminisms with which I still uh, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely hesitate uh, to identify. Mm -hmm. So, so um, who, would, who would you kind of um, identify as the feminist voices, the women of color feminist voices? that felt, you know, the most like a space that you could interact with at that time. So you're talking sort of late 70s, early 80s now? Yes, yes, Right, yes. because that's sort of... Yes. So. Relatable. Yeah. Well, I um, was um, fortunate to, to be able to um, hang out with um, people like Bell Hooks and uh, Shiri Moraga, Gloria Anzaldúa, mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, for me, 1981 is the is, is the pivotal it? year. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, this bridge Call My Back was published. Uh, uh, Bell Hooks' book was published uh, in that year. I think my own book was published yeah. around the same time. Also, Michelle Wallace's. Yeah, uh, Michelle Wallace's, and then Glo uh, Gloria Joseph and Gloria Jimmy's Joseph and yeah, exactly, exactly all in 1981. So all and and then there were these amazing conferences that took uh, place. Right. Uh, 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 common differences, right. uh, parallels, and intersections. So it wasn't as if I had to uh, make an effort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the scene was um, mm -hmm. already set. The framework uh, came together. Right. And uh, and it, I, I was uh, hailed by it, right. so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But yeah, uh, uh, I was teaching at San Francisco State at that time. Mm -hmm. And so was uh, Cherie Moraga and, and um, Gloria w Bell Hooks. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, around that time, uh, new formations mm -hmm. uh, uh, were, were happening. There were 
amazing confrontations at various mm. conferences, the right. NWA essay. Yeah. I think I attended, I did not attend the one in ni- 1981, yeah. which was really pivotal. Which the was stores, the, uh, yeah, the stores. Conference. But mm. um, I did attend the conference the following year, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, was... That was the one in Iowa, right? Wasn't no, that no, I, no I went to the one in Humboldt, Humboldt, um, huh. in Arcadia, in Humboldt okay. State. Uh, hmm. I don't know that. Yeah, and the theme, the theme was uh, around racism, mm-hmm. but there were major issues there as right. well. Um, uh, so, so yeah, um, that I think was such a uh, <coughs> productive, generative uh, period. Uh, uh, and I was teaching in women's studies, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact. Uh, mm-hmm. I I had not actually thought of myself as a person who would fit into the new field of uh, women's studies. As a matter of fact, I think I felt uh, a, a greater kinship with, with black studies. Mm-hmm. And I did want to teach. I, at that particular time, I wasn't interested in a full-time academic career uh, because I was doing a great deal of activism, um, traveling and speaking and organizing, and I wanted to continue that. Uh, so um, I, I uh, got this offer from San Francisco State and uh, to teach in the... The, the new, relatively new women's studies department. Um, and at the same time, um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Bill Hooks was teaching there. Uh, I don't think they realized uh, you know, what was no, going on. No, it's kind of incredible to, have, to think yeah. that Cherie, you, yeah. and Gloria were, Bell Hooks was in the same yes. space yeah. at that time. Yeah. I never mm-hmm. knew that actually. Yeah. That yeah. you yeah. all. Because one question that I was a radical space then. You then know, exactly, space. absolutely. Yeah. Radical, but, but it was more a, than any. But it was a contested looking. space yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, because I can remember right. the difficulties I had teaching courses in the women's studies department. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I would be told that this is not appropriate for women's studies. This is more appropriate for black studies. Black studies. Uh, yeah. And I remember very specifically um, an encounter with. Um, a faculty member with whom I was co-teaching the introductory course. Uh, and I, at that particular time, I was thinking about uh, the, a, a book that I would write later on, um, on um, the blues. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, blues Legacies and mm-hmm. Black Feminism. And we had this huge fight in front of the students mm-hmm. about the blues. <laughs> when this white woman faculty member was telling me that this was entirely inappropriate for a women's studies class because oh. the blues were all about uh, uh, men beating up women and, mm-hmm. and, and, and so forth and so on. And it was, so the, for me, that was, um, that was a pivotal moment. Mm-hmm. And I realized how much work uh, would have to be done within that field to, mm-hmm. and I guess the work is still... Happening. Happening too. And needs to happen still. Exactly. But exactly. I was curious about sort of your socialist, um, you know, um, commitments mm-hmm. and how that plays out in, in women of color feminism. Mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. Because I don't think there were too many people who identified as such in women's studies at well, that time. But, the, but then that was the, the sphere of socialist feminism. Mm-hmm. So, right. you know, you had people like Zilla, <laughs> right. you know, uh, her amazing book. Yeah, no, there's a genealogy. So there, yeah, so um, and it's interesting because I think I came to my work on gender through my socialist communist trajectory. Right. Uh, uh, I read uh, Origin of the Family, Private mm-hmm. Property, and mm-hmm. the State long mm-hmm. before uh, there had been any uh, discussion of uh, the field mm-hmm. of, of, of women's studies. So, 
I hear that thing what you're saying about the contestation because it was so um, if you look at the literature back then you see the contestation you see the points of contestation because the whole theory the theoretical foundation of understanding social relations in capitalism was not happening mm -hmm. in feminism mm -hmm. was not happening in women's studies so those kinds of problems that you're pointing to uh, become very apparent in one's memory mm -hmm. of this right? mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that is where I would see you being like on the outside as the communist looking in from a socialist feminist frame and what's not happening in the field at the time. Mm. It so it's happening. You're talking but about the happening? institutionalized. The See, institutionalized. that's what that's what the, the distinction is. Yeah. So then, when women's studies gets institutionalized, there are almost no spaces that I can think of where there is a socialist feminist orientation the to the field. There are socialist feminist theorists mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. activists. Mm -hmm. in the world, in the mm -hmm. producing those uh, knowledges. Mm -hmm. Because I know this because I remember some of the same struggles, right? Not just around race and, and uh, um, you know, whatever, U.S. Class. exceptionalism or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, Class. yeah, but, but, yeah, very fundamentally the analysis uh, of social relations that actually was anti-capitalist, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which didn't, and that's from the point of view of somebody who's been in women's studies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So through the institutional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of lens. But I think there were some certain figures around whom... Um, Socialist feminists. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about UC Santa Cruz and the department I came to teach in for many years, mm -hmm. the History of Consciousness. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and when that uh, program was founded... Right. Uh, uh, it, it it was around socialist feminism. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, I think that at, at a certain point there was a far too simplistic assumption of what it meant to do work around gender yeah. or around women's issues. Uh, and actually some of this came from, um, some of this came from the communist framework as yeah, well, uh, right. the woman question, mm -hmm. right, right, uh, right. Uh, which is how I came to it, yeah. uh, and, 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 and I had to figure out, you know, how to uh, um, sort of extricate myself from that framework mm -hmm. without leaving behind uh, what was productive and, and, and what, was, what was important. Uh, but I think as uh, women's studies came to be institutionalized, it's uh, it, it gave rise to uh, uh, a whole uh, strain of um, literature that uh, moved away from engagement with issues of class mm -hmm. and uh, imperialism. And uh, I mean, I actually like to think about uh, what was happening on the ground in the communities outside mm -hmm. of the academy. Sure. And if I think about uh, the uh, work that women of color uh, were doing, I'm thinking specifically about a genealogy that goes back to people like Fran Vail, who mm -hmm. in 1970 published that uh, amazing piece, uh, Double Jeopardy mm -hmm. to be Black and Female. Right. And then uh, the Third World Women's it's Alliance, alliance. Yeah. Uh, that developed this framework, which was the the um, the name of their newspaper, a uh, Triple Jeopardy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, today, when people refer uh, to intersectionality as if that category had always been around, mm -hmm. right. it's been so completely naturalized mm -hmm. now that uh, they don't take into consideration that uh, much of the impetus for developing a framework that was capable of addressing these issues together came directly from um, people, women especially, uh, working on the ground, doing activism mm -hmm. against war, mm -hmm. uh, uh, activism within the labor movement, uh, activism against, uh, for example, sterilization abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Triple Jeopardy, which was the name of the newspaper, mm -hmm. referred to racism, um, uh, capital, well, how, how, how was it? Um, it was uh, 
racism, sexism, and imperialism. imperialism. Those were the three categories. Right. And of course, imperialism yeah. embraced capitalism. Right. So, I mean, it's interesting because I, um, I, I felt drawn to that analysis all along, but mm. did not necessarily see it as feminist. feminist. Uh, it was the yeah. alternative framework yeah. to what was then considered to be a feminism. Feminist. And it was that uh, framework right. that didn't make it into the academy mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. and would take f uh, another 10 years uh, before right. it became available and then perhaps not until the... Um, well, it hasn't really made it into some department. Yeah, but <laughs> it hasn't. Yeah. 2016. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But yeah, so I, I think it's really important to look at all of the ways in which the work outside mm -hmm. of the academy had a direct impact mm -hmm. on what would eventually be taken up uh, mm -hmm. within. Within on some levels. On so, some levels, yeah. Right. So in reflecting on your work, say, over the last four decades, um, that feminist work and that feminist activist work, how would you say, how would you imagine that that work has impacted um, the lives of women? How, mm -hmm. how do you see it moving through real, the lives of women in real ways and creating change? And this is, of course, in the imaginary, right? Because some of it you will know for sure and some you would hope that it does. Mm -hmm. How would you think? Well, I think that whenever one engages uh, in work that is um, designed to uh, contribute to social transformation, mm -hmm. one, one only hopes uh, to have an impact. Yeah. Uh, and for me, I've never imagined that impact as, uh, as being confined to work that I do as an individual. Mm -hmm. but I, I always see it uh, as... Uh, a collective process mm -hmm. and, and even things that I've uh, done like the book that I wrote in 1981 women race and class uh, uh, a lot of those ideas came from uh, my activism mm -hmm. and came from my community uh, so when people tell me uh, that uh, they were profoundly transformed by that mm -hmm. I can't take the credit for it mm -hmm. uh, myself uh, mm -hmm. So I, I suppose I would say that uh, I'm, I always hope to be connected to communities mm -hmm. that, uh, that have some impact on, on, uh, on uh, the world, that make a difference in the world, that uh, make it perhaps somewhat easier to move forward. Uh, uh, and of course, change is never uh, given. It, it's it's always um, you know what can be a very um, positive uh, transformation at one point can turn into its opposite so easily. Uh, mm -hmm. So I so I don't I don't I don't think it's a good thing to rest on one's laurels mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we can see that uh, some. Um, Victories within the academy, uh, d departments, uh, fields, uh, which seems so revolutionary at yeah, the time. Completely. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's always important. It's, it's important to look back and understand the, the histories and the genealogies, but at the same time, it's important to look forward and, mm -hmm. and not say, oh, this is what I've done. And yeah. I feel proud of what I've done. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the reason I asked the question the way I did, because um, it's not about the self. And knowing you, it would never be like, well, this is what Angela did and contributed to. But um, the way that your work is often taken up, and we can understand why and how it's taken up as individual. You, of course, don't look at it that way. But so I'm saying in that imaginary, how do you see that in part of the collective way you think about it as making those fundamental differences that haven't happened out of other spaces? So, yeah. for instance, so if you were to specify, mm -hmm. like what were the um, issues, concerns, contradictions that you feel really engaged you mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. which you mm -hmm. have worked? over this mm -hmm. long period of time. 
Yeah. What would be those spaces? Mm -hmm. And the question came out of the prior question and response, right? Sure, the contestation. Sure. Thing. Right, sure. Well, I think I've always uh, been interested in complicating, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever is given. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, not in a, not in a way that is not um, comprehensible to people who may not have had the same kind of uh, preparation. But, but I, I can even, I can you know, remember when I was young and wanting to, and when I felt drawn to communism, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I joined a communist youth organization when I was in my teens. Uh, and that was a decision I made, even though my parents had many friends who were communists. Uh, but I can remember even then wanting to figure out how racism and, and class exploitation, I, I mean, I, I instinctively felt that they were uh, uh, missing the, things, that, that they had to be thought together, that mm -hmm. we had to figure out uh, uh, how to bring them together mm -hmm. so that it wasn't only a class analysis. Right. Uh, uh, that uh, overshadowed everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I think it was about breaking down hierarchies, mm -hmm. even hierarchies of uh, the understanding of the way uh, oppression works in the world. Uh, and, and so uh, later when, when I was a member of the Communist Party mm -hmm. and I was active in the uh, the Black Panther Party. I was actually a member of the Black Panther Party. Uh, uh, and those of us who were in other parties were told that we had to choose whether we wanted mm -hmm. to right. remain in the Black right. Panther Party or... And that wasn't a difficult decision for me as uh, passionate as I felt about the work in black communities and the work I was doing with the Black Panther Party. But I needed a, a, a larger framework. Right. Uh, and so... Mm -hmm. Uh, the my experiences within the Communist Party gave me this global framework, uh, this mm -hmm. way of identifying not only with um, struggles, labor struggles, mm -hmm. and struggles of, uh, that were being conducted by people of other uh, racial and ethnic backgrounds, and you know white workers mm -hmm. and so forth, but also the world. Right. right. And uh, t to me, that has. Uh, I, I guess I'm still still talking about that today. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, because even as we are witnessing a new um, flourishing of activism today, uh, there could be a more uh, pronounced internationalism. Yeah. Uh, and that's what mm -hmm. in the United States of America we're always encouraged to look inward mm -hmm. and not outward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Problem of insularity. Yeah. Yeah. So I think actually, and you've addressed some of the challenges, but if you were to think um, concretely about, you know, maybe even just think about what we face now, what are some of the most urgent? Um, challenges according to you that we face in doing a, a sort of radical uh, yesterday you used the word serious as you said <laughs> a lot in your talk right so a serious radical feminist anti-racist mm -hmm. anti-imperialist kind of praxis right mm -hmm. what kinds of challenges are we facing well You know, I think that uh, you know, in some ways we, we've really missed the boat on a whole number mm -hmm. of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say this not to be overly critical, right. but because it's important to take promises that were unfulfilled in yeah. the past mm -hmm. and yeah. use them to help us to build agendas uh, f for the present. And so I can remember uh, back in um, 
Wow, it must have been in the 70s when we were talking about, uh, when we first began to talk about violence against women. And I, I you know, I, I wrote a piece for, I think it was Kitchen Table Press, mm. on violence against women. And mm. I can't remember what year it was. Mm. Um, it was called Violence Against Women and the Ongoing Challenge to um, Racism. Mm -hmm. uh, what was in the 80s? Huh? Sometime in the 80s. Was but it I'm trying 80s? to think. Yeah, what but no, I can remember. Okay, it all kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, unfortunately, before this conversation, I didn't sit down and try to map things out clearly mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do remember in the 70s taking this issue, taking up this issue in relation to the Joanne Little case. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, I mm -hmm. know, was uh, 75 or mm -hmm. 76. Uh, so maybe that piece was like 79, 80. Right. Which one? The, the Joanne Little mm -hmm. piece? Yeah. No, the Joanne no, Little. No, the one after. That may have been later, yeah, but it came it out later. of the experiences okay. yeah. uh, that uh, we had uh, working around the Joanne Little mm -hmm. case. And Joanne Little, of course, was a young black woman who was mm -hmm. raped by a guard mm -hmm. in a prison in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I wrote a piece for Ms. Magazine mm -hmm. on that. Uh, and and, and I, I remember that we were talking at that time about the the importance of men getting involved in the mm -hmm. campaign against mm -hmm. violence against women. Mm -hmm. And that there was, as a matter of fact, an organization, and this I think was in, <clears throat> in it, it may have been in the early 80s in, in, in Washington, D.C., Black Men Against Rape, and a mm -hmm. number of small formations of uh -huh. men who had taken up the, uh, the issue of um, combating uh, gender, what we call then violence against mm -hmm. women. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And I remember thinking back then that this is, this is what needs to be done. Uh, this is how we're actually going to eradicate gender violence. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it didn't catch on. Mm -hmm. And there were a few um, men's groups here and there who mm -hmm. were doing that work, but it didn't, it wasn't embraced. Uh, uh, and, and that means that um, here we are in the 21st century, in the 16th year of the 21st century, and that's still yeah. up, that's still on, on 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 the agenda. So I think that is one of the uh, the main uh, challenges. And I'm very happy to see young men, young black men, mm -hmm. especially uh, taking up uh, feminist uh, mm -hmm. frameworks and. Uh, I have encountered groups of young students here and there, uh, men doing work in um, rape crisis centers, women's yeah. centers, yeah. And, and, and in this new student activism, I think it's very much um, uh, shaped by feminism. Uh, and that has to do with the, you know, Black Lives Matter and uh, the, the, the feminist framework, uh, the, activist feminist framework that has become a part of um, activism today. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible for young people to consider themselves serious yeah. activists right. if they don't uh, embrace feminism mm -hmm. to uh, a certain extent mm -hmm. or another. Mm -hmm. So it's both a challenge but I see some real hopeful developments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thinking back on that, um, what you just pointed to and what's been missing and the kinds of mistakes that, you know, we've all made and contributed to. Um, how do you see, what do you think needs to happen in terms of feminists across race, ethnic, class divides to build solidarity and across national bo and national borders as well, to build solidarity to, um, you know, really have an understanding of how to contribute to necessary change in this age of neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, because of what you just said, I think so that, much of the youth. Yeah, and I think that uh, the feminisms mm -hmm. that uh, with which we identify, anti-racist, mm -hmm. uh, anti-imperialist, mm -hmm. uh, um, anti-capitalist anti uh, mm -hmm. feminisms, mm -hmm. uh, are, are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is something that uh, it's sometimes difficult for academics and activists to grasp, uh, mm -hmm. that they can't assume that, uh, that the framework is going to always remain right. the same. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And so even those of us who might think that we have uh, um, attached ourselves to the most generative, the most productive mm -hmm. uh, framework, have to be careful mm -hmm. about uh, allowing that framework to stagnate. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so therefore, uh, older generations um, uh, really have to listen carefully to uh, younger generations. And I think that the value of listening is um, uh, something that we don't place enough uh, emphasis uh, mm -hmm. on uh, within the circles that, um, that I operate in, um, abolitionist circles. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen so much change uh, over a relatively short period of time. Uh, you know, for instance, we were, t we were talking about uh, the role that uh, work around transgender issues uh, 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 plays. Uh, mm -hmm. It would have been impossible to imagine mm -hmm. uh, 20 years ago even. That conversation, yeah. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, and um, people like C.C. McDonnell, uh, mm -hmm. uh, who spent years, several years in prison and was, you know, brutalized and um, falsely charged uh, with murder when she was defending herself mm -hmm. against someone who had attacked her. She's, um, she's a really amazing activist. I had the opportunity to spend some time with her at a mm -hmm. conference not only around trans issues, but around issues of the prison industrial complex mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in, in general. And the, that conversation has allowed us to, uh, and I think this, this is the value of feminism to mm -hmm. me, that mm -hmm. the flexibility of the mm -hmm. framework mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, has allowed us to rethink the way in which we had um, imagined the analysis and the struggle against what we call the prison industrial mm -hmm. complex. Uh, um, to begin to uh, talk about uh, uh, the ways in which uh, the institution itself of the prison is a is an apparatus uh, that uh, that that uh, engages in processes of gendering mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, that. Um, that 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 makes it have so much of a broader reach, mm -hmm. and it's not only connected to punishment and to prisoners and mm -hmm. prisoners' rights and so forth, but but the part of the uh, process of working towards the abolition of the prison industrial complex is has to do with the abolition of a, an ideological apparatus, not only a, uh, uh, you know, st state repressive apparatus, mm -hmm. but, it's, but it's also about uh, uh, an apparatus that has, um, has helped to, to create and continues to reproduce the, the whole um, process of gendering. Right. It's a gendering right. apparatus. Mm -hmm. right. And that would never have become apparent if we had not uh, uh, been willing to embrace the issue of trans mm. prisoners' right. rights. Um, and so as I was saying um, mm. yesterday, I think that, uh, that feminism allows us to break free of the, um, the framework that assumes that, you know, the, what is uh, numerically larger mm -hmm. is going to to define the issue. Mm -hmm. So we recognize that even the smallest, uh, yeah. most minute issue contains mm -hmm. uh, um, insights that can allow us to mm -hmm. uh, move forward in amazing ways. Mm -hmm. So I, th I see feminism as also about methodology and right. not just as about objects mm -hmm. of what 
one is studying mm-hmm. objects of one's uh, organizing, but yeah. as a as a method, a methodology, a framework mm-hmm. uh, of how to be in the world. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Which is why mm-hmm. then one can envision uh, <coughs> futures that are emancipatory or liberatory at the lar- in largest possible ways. Exactly, exactly. Right, because it's not about just the um, concreteness of we want to live a life that is uh, that um, you know um, gives us food and shelter and this and that mm-hmm. and the other, which of mm-hmm. course we all want, but that you one can in, imagine or it allows one to imagine an expansive mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. vision of what it would mean to live in a just world. Exactly. So what would that mean mm. for you? How would you characterize that? Well, you know, I always think that these, um, these um, imaginaries are temporary mm-hmm. uh, uh, because uh, once we have moved to the place we once imagined, we right. recognize that it is so much more complicated. Than that, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. there's so much more. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's precisely the value of the imagination. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I, you know, what's, what's interesting is that, um, that we're often encouraged to, uh, to think in terms of um, bodies. Mm-hmm. And of course, racism does that uh, mm-hmm. because race yeah. is a, is presumed to be attached to bodies, bodies. although it isn't. We know that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and um, and as a matter of fact, that's why I found your notion years ago when I first read your um, uh, "There Were Women in the Politics of Feminism." Mm-hmm. Your notion of "There Were Women" as a political project. project. Uh, yeah. I found that so liberating. Uh, 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 and. And so I guess uh, I would want to live in a world where the processes of commodification are clearly on their way out Mm -hmm. of history. Mm -hmm. So there's some, I mean, what sometimes often appear to be very basic wishes are so far out of of reach mm. and the, the 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 very ability to get an education a free education that seems mm. so bizarre today yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so that's I, I would want I would want um, education to be free from um, kindergarten or child care all the way up to uh, postgraduate and beyond uh, and I would want I, I see that would mean that the that the very process of education would have to be transformed too mm-hmm. it's not just mm-hmm. getting being able to have free access to what exists now no right. but that would mean that uh, that uh, Curriculum would change, structures would change, administration would change, relations would change. Uh, and having spent the majority of my life on uh, college and university campuses, what, uh, what really um, continues uh, to bother me is the fact that the workers on these and these spaces are so invisible, mm-hmm. even today, even mm-hmm. students who consider them mm-hmm. themselves to be most radical or yeah. faculty, they don't take into consideration mm-hmm. that we have not created a community uh, on these campuses that involves the people who actually enable mm-hmm. the work to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I would, uh, you know, I always go back to Marx uh, because uh, mm-hmm. to me that, uh, before, before Marx uh, decided that uh, that the question of leisure time would be um, solved by 
reducing the number of hours mm -hmm. one works mm -hmm. and the, the day, day right mm -hmm. uh, which somehow or another has gotten stuck at eight hours mm -hmm. uh, right uh, by now we should definitely be at four mm -hmm. or yeah. three <laughs> right because of yes. one looks yes, yes exactly and if one looks at at the struggles for right. a shorter work day yeah. over the years and centuries mm -hmm. we should definitely be at about three hours a day now um, but but uh, I would I um, um, imagine people having the opportunity to really follow their passion mm -hmm. uh, and everyone should be able to make art mm -hmm. whether it's it doesn't have to be good art yeah. uh, but everyone should be able to express themselves because I took that really seriously from um, uh, Marx's analysis mm -hmm. of, about the fact that uh, we externalize ourselves in the objects that we make mm -hmm. and that workers are totally alienated from the products right. of their labor because of the whole capitalist uh, system. Right. So I would want a, a world in which that was possible. Uh, um, yeah, and I, mean, I could go on and talk about right. you know, the basic things and also philosophically uh, what, would it, what might it mean to transform human relations mm -hmm. uh, and to transform our sense of ourselves. Especially in an era when commodification is so intense. Everything that can be commodified is commodified. Which I mean, is everything. Everything. Which is literally exactly. everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. Even thoughts, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. yeah. Right. Commodified and appropriated, and, and the state is a master at this now. It takes so much of it, and even relations, you know? Some elements of human relations are commodified and becomes the state's language. Mm -hmm. The state, you know, makes it part of its language. Exactly. Of, um, relating to people, telling them how they relate to each other. I mean, if you look at the current election campaign, you see it. But these, some of these ideas are not these people's. Mm -hmm. They well. come out of elements of struggle that they have appropriated and commodified. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. So what do you see as the kind of future of <coughs> feminist praxis? What would... Well... Our praxis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think That's that um, that this might be a time to try to broaden the reach mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of feminism. Yeah. Uh, uh, and to... You know, I've never been someone who has uh, relied on labels, mm -hmm. uh, because even early on, uh, my position was, well, it doesn't really matter whether you call yourself a feminist. Right. It, the, it, it, what matters most is the, the work that you do, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the activist work, the scholarly work, whatever. Um, um, but I do think that, um, that this might be the moment to encourage uh, a more accessible mm -hmm. feminism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I gave a talk at Vassar um, to mark the 30th anniversary of their Women Gender Studies Department. I think it was the 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And it was called Our Feminisms. Uh, and you know, how can we make feminisms accessible mm -hmm. to young um, women and men mm -hmm. um, who uh, and um, those who don't necessarily directly identify mm -hmm. along those binary lines uh, uh, as something that is relevant to their lives mm -hmm. uh, because it's inevitable that that younger generations are going to see feminism mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing this played out in the elections right. as uh, mm -hmm. as uh, belonging to their mothers or their grandmothers or their great grandmothers right, right. right. and not as uh, something that, that 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 they can take and transform mm -hmm. and work with uh, mm -hmm. and work on mm -hmm. uh, so i think this is precisely the period when that um, when feminisms can become and are becoming uh, mm -hmm more accessible. Uh, I like the idea that, uh, I'd like to see these, uh, you know, young, I was, as I was saying, young black men, activists, student activists, uh, you know, talking about uh, 
uh, the importance of uh, challenging gender violence. Mm -hmm. uh, I like uh, the fact that uh, the, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, uh, has been um, represented uh, as a movement that is, is expansive and that addresses uh, uh, queer issues, addresses mm -hmm. issues of ableism. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for me, feminism is about producing these broad frameworks. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not only, yeah. it began uh, with a focus on gender, but I right. think that we yeah. know now that the real value of feminism is the ability to um, create a framework of understanding mm -hmm. and analysis that uh, allows us to do what is otherwise impossible, uh, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when we rely on these frameworks that assume that there are discrete uh, issues and categories and they don't interact with mm -hmm. each other, right. or at the same time there might be things that need to be pulled apart that we can't... So th that, mm -hmm. that is what we need today. Um, and. Um, I think it appeals to the younger generation in ways that it never appealed to um, our different generations uh, mm -hmm. because uh, it was not familiar mm -hmm. and it has become more familiar to yeah. those who are coming up. Yeah. But, and so it should be more familiar because they take it for granted and they can move forward right. with it and create uh, other things that we never could have imagined, imagined ourselves. So, so much that, is about the imagination, right? Exactly. And but that too yeah. has been commodified, right? Yeah. The, their notion of feminism. Because when you hear, is this person a feminist? Or that person is singing that they are a feminist. And you start thinking through what some of this means. But see, I think that's okay, Linda. I mm -hmm. think it's okay. Uh, and I think it's good because I think it may... Because if... Um, is Beyonce a feminist? Mm -hmm. Is a good question. <laughs> Because it allows us to engage we'll in conversation. conversation and, right, right. And, and, we and, have them, let me tell you. We yeah. are having them in classes. We are well, yeah. Them. <laughs> and also that there's so many different versions of yeah. feminism. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she's, you know, she has her there's right. no way to say yes or no definitively to any question because the, it's so many different questions. Right. Um, but I think I think it's great that these uh, that these issues are coming up in in popular culture and uh, uh, you know Beyonce is Beyonce a feminist? Is she, well, there's also the other question, that, right. <laughs> which I won't no, mention we don't here. Need that. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, but so, I think it was great that she and did others, that. And, and yeah. others, you know, the question has been asked of Adele and um, and. Um, that popular singer. Janelle Monáe? Who? Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Minaj. Yeah. Oh, Nikki oh, I thought his name I couldn't remember. Yeah, Nicki Minaj. Minaj. Yeah. Well, you know. And Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has said yeah. made some comments about, about women. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was her, yeah. her her Grammy. Yeah. Um, speech. Really progressive. About, yeah. You know, Oh. And even across, but you those, know, but the thing is that what is progressive at one moment in history is not, in the other. Is not necessarily yeah, so progressive uh, fifty years later yeah. or twenty yeah. years later. Um, and uh, the value of feminism, or the value of of, of anti-racist, anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist uh, feminisms, that. Uh, a kind of Marxist inflected mm -hmm. feminism mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, it it allows us to think about the framework of our analysis or of our organizing at the same time as we use that framework to think about whatever it is mm -hmm. um, we are examining, mm -hmm. and I think that um, and that's that's what that's a habit that most people haven't uh, been able to embrace uh, because it's it's a habit that contravenes disciplinary thinking and disciplinary yeah. thinking the framework all is what enables everything else so once you begin challenging the framework everything falls apart mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and feminism allows us to um, trouble the framework 
and allow things to fall apart, uh, and at the same time put them imagine back together something again. Different. Exactly, imagine something, something entirely different. different. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful place to end. Yeah. Okay, now good. Thank good. you, Thank Angela. You. Okay.